You're watching Inside Out for the Midlands. Next, we've got Tom's story. His mum, Susan, was diagnosed with mouth cancer two years ago. Well, she was lucky it was diagnosed early and removed, but it's left her with a hole in her face. 13-year-old Tom tells us how his mum got her face back. This is my mum, Susan. People always want to know why she got that bandage across her face. Sometimes we get a few funny looks when we're out. Even the occasional comment. I have to try hard not to say something back. It's been there for two years. It all started when she found a lump in the top of her mouth and showed it to her dentist. So they took a biopsy and um, I was due to go back in four weeks for the results that um, they rang me within days and uh, asked me to come in the following day. So I knew then really that it was, you know, I was anticipating it being cancer because you don't get called in the following day, really. I won't lie to you, that was a tough day. I can't remember if I cried or not, but I was pretty crushed, yeah. Unfortunately, getting rid of the cancer when they had to take out the roof of mum's mouth and some of her face as well. I'll just take this one off and then uh, prepare a new um, new tape with two pieces of uh, dressing. Fold it up and then they just go over there, like that. It is hard looking at them all because it's not the same as it used to be and it's not the same at all. And it's not right looking at someone with a hole in their face because it is different, it is strange, but I've come to accept it on to terms with that and, you know, have to get on with it. You know, I have to stay strong for my mum. All that's about to change, though. We're coming to meet the man who's going to give mum her face back. Susan Williams. This is Sat Palmer, a maxillofacial surgeon at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Birmingham. So we'd like to put some bone in to your top jaw and that's why we're taking a bit of bone out from your leg mm. but also this is your nose and what you've got missing is a bit of skin in that area of your lip which you can't see on the model because the model's mm. only that of bone and um, we'll be basically putting the skin in to seal that gap off as well mm. and that denture is the single thing that's stopping every time she has anything to drink um, fluids and food coming up it's obviously not working that well because they use the leg bone to build a new roof for mum's mouth, and that will let them put dental implants in. I can't help worrying about what could go wrong, though. Is there a chance that mum will wake up? Mm -hmm. Basic, I don't, you know, it, there is always, always a chance that something like that could go wrong. However, this is something that we do routinely here in Birmingham, and your mother's, you know, young and totally fit and healthy, so we don't anticipate any problems at all. I have to say, that looks pretty good. Sat sees a lot of cases yeah. like mum's, yeah. so a lot of the time people don't actually make it this far. Uh, head and neck cancer is very heartbreaking because uh, what we know is that if patients present early, by that I mean they seek help from the doctor or the dentist and they get referred to the specialist early, your chances of being cured from the disease is between 80 to 90%. So why is it that so many people aren't diagnosed as quickly as mum? I think often the cancer gets missed purely because people don't know what they're looking for. And that applies to the patients, but often a lot of the GPs and often dentists don't know, uh, you know when they're looking at a cancer and not uh, getting an appropriate referral quickly. A week later, mum was all ready for surgery and things are finally going to be back to normal. Oh, I'm a bit scared now of what it's actually going to look like, you know, because I've not used to wearing this for so, so long. I suppose it's excitement, but a bit of apprehension at the same time. So, yeah, the intriguing. <laughs> but at the last minute, there was a problem finding a bed for her after the operation. Unfortunately, we've had to... Um... Uh, cancelled Susan's operation and I've just had to tell her that um, not surprisingly she's not taking it too well but I'd be the, exactly the same um, 
if I'd worked myself up for the surgery psychologically. Well, obviously I'm bitterly disappointed. I understand why it's happened. Um, you know, basically some emergencies come in and take in the bed that could have been allocated to me. But yeah, I'm, I'm gutted, to be honest. Tom, my offer's been cancelled as there is no intensive care bed available for me. I'm coming home. Disappointing, but that's the way it goes. Love you. Kiss. That's pretty terrible, really. Oh, I thought the operation was going to go ahead, but... Oh, well. Well, that oh well, but you know what I mean? Can't, we can't do anything about it. Mr Tomcam, we're in the car on the way to Birmingham. I'm very, very nervous, obviously. And I'm scared. With an anxious three-week wait, it was on October 7th that the big day finally arrived. Are you happy for us to start here? There were two teams of surgeons working on one at the same time. The plate we've had made, custom made for Susan, he'll put that in, which will guide him to putting the bone in the right position. And because he, Tim's already given us the measurements of how much skin he needs and what shape he needs, we'll try and raise it to that um, sort of specification. Mom was under the knife for eight hours, but the wait seemed like forever. Connor's just cut around the skin, and he's found the areas, the bottom end, where we're going to basically uh, we've cut the bone and taken a segment out. Later that evening, I finally got the knees I've been waiting for. So, Mr. Palmer's just wrong, and it was all good, as expected. I wasn't too nervous at that. I know Mr. Palmer's a very good surgeon, so this what I'm trying to say is that I trusted him and he's delivered uh, and hopefully we're going to see Mum tomorrow and let's hope that she looks good. Mum's recovery is going well. Only nine days after the operation, she's been told she can go home. I feel fine. I feel, you know, there's a certain discomfort in the piece of skin that's, been, that's gone into my mouth because obviously that needs to have time to shrink further um, but yeah everything everything feels great really good there's still a way to go when this is healed they'll start rebuilding her teeth but the main thing is mum's finally got her face back I'm really excited about getting the teeth and sorting this nose out because that's got to be sort of you know um, sorted out a bit, so there's still bits and bobs to sort, but I'm happy with what I've got so far. I'm feeling really good because Mum is, looks brilliant, she looks fantastic, and Miss Palmer's done a really good job, and yeah, this looks amazing. <laughs>